Well, it's a, uh, it's a major biosciences educational research centre in a part of Ontario that was previously underserved by that kind of facility. It's at Brock University, which is a kind of a, a mid-tier Ontario university. It's about 100 miles outside of Toronto. And uh, this was a major coup for the university to actually get the funding to do this project. It's a highly, highly complex project. We did that project um, in uh, conjunction with an American firm. And so we sort of were the, the, the overall design architect in terms of the concept of the building, position on the site, the organization of the building um, in terms of the major component areas and so forth. And Payette would be really focused on the high technical areas of the building, the labs and the phytotron and so forth. And so we built a model, a, a full BIM model in ARCHICAD, and then Payette would um, insert their lab work, they were working in AutoCAD, and it was actually fairly seamless, where we could kind of reference their drawings and, and kind of embed them into the ARCHICAD model and produce the construction documents. The building itself is very interesting, I think. It's not just a lab building, it's a, I said at the outset, this was a very, very important building for the university. This was a, almost like a coming of age that, you know, that they were, um, going to kind of elevate their, st their stature uh, with not only within that region but also within the province and within the country and this kind of facility could allow them to attract some major major researchers which would be very very good for the university because this is the this building is positioned very strategically as a new southern face of the campus it's meant to project um, a very different image that you know this is something amazing happening at Brock and speak to what's going on in the building, but also to connect not only with students coming from off campus, coming from buses and transit and so forth, and into the building, but then that the building itself is a connector to pick up those students and run them through the balance of the campus. So the building is as an east-west spine, picks up students at the eastern edge of the building, takes them up, rises them gradually up to the level of circulation, which is one level above, a kind of a piano noble, in the, in the campus and connects to all of the other buildings in the campus. So it's not just a research building, it's also a connector. So it's every student is able to go into it even though it's a highly secure research building. What we were also trying to do is render science visible and build a sense of collegiality within the building, not only for students that are not studying or researching there, but, but, uh, but also the students that actually are. So that how do you do that in closed lab buildings? And so we introduced a lot of natural daylight into the labs. That's what the screen is on the southern face of the building is to control the amount of sunlight that comes into those labs. It still renders a very beautiful and pleasant work environment. Its function essentially is a, is a um, to control solar heat gain. It uses a series of horizontal tubes that kind of loosely come from this notion of test tubes. And it uses a support structure, which is a hexagon. And a hexagon is a really interesting shape. It, it, it's an organic shape that occurs both in chemistry and, and biology. And this is both a, um, a biochemical research facility. It occurs at a, at a subatomic level. It occurs at a cellular level in plants. It occurs in crystals of, of minerals. It's a recurring um, shape within nature, and we thought a fitting kind of response in terms of the structural component to support this uh, sunscreen. And what we're really trying to do is make it, the building visible, to really capture excitement um, in terms of what's going on and attract, as I said, students and researchers.